Hello everybody, it is June 21st, 2013, Friday, 2013. It's weekly wrap-up. And uh, wrap-up is the right word, especially for this week, because I finally wrapped up the vibrato course. It's finished. Lots of hours and lots of good ideas and approaches towards getting you to develop your vibrato. In the last clip, I actually put a whole outline that outlines the whole course so it explains why, and I also do in review in that clip, why I did the specific things I did in the order that I did them in, and you also have this reference uh, layout uh, outline that you can look at so you can always refer back to it so you can get to any anything that you're weak about uh, in a very quick way and you'll be able to see you know what clip was doing what and what the specific reasons were for it. Okay so anyway uh, as we're talking about the wrap-up here that is the wrap-up the vibrato course is done I will continue on with the advanced voice course uh, and uh, getting that taken care of and uh, I'm still behind the scenes working on other projects that uh, I look forward to starting to introduce uh, now that we've got the vibrato course done. But for a while, I'll work on the advanced course and uh, uh, possibly work a little bit more on the ear training course that I have been putting online for a very long time. I've got the beginning up to the intermediate done on the listen and recognize course. That's a completely different type of ear training. Uh, than the type of ear training that I'm actually developing for singers in the advanced voice course. In the advanced voice course, we are vocalizing over our bridges and through our range, throughout our range with all the basic musical sounds, meaning major, major seventh, dominant seventh, minor seventh, minor seven flat five, diminished seventh, diminished arpeggios, uh, and as well as minor pentatonic, major pentatonic still to come, and the whole tone scale still to come, and then the understanding of how you can take, for example, uh, a diminished arpeggio and start to understand how that works against all the dominant seventh chords, the five chords, which is a very cool blues approach. So just starting to get one sound in your head that you can vocalize, you can pit these sounds against different chord changes and uh, that turns into really fantastic things but the way my approach has been is to develop your voice to get you to be able to sing through your bridges but at the same time internalize all these internal combinations of harmonies so you're becoming a much better harmony singer you're becoming prepared to be an improvisationalist with your voice you're doing all of these things as you're working on the advanced voice course so I'm always excited about uh, all of this information and getting it down, organized, and on the site. And so I will be heading towards getting that one wrapped up and uh, also the new stuff coming, which is fun to uh, be working towards. So you hang in there. Uh, we've got some really cool things coming up and also some song breakdowns and some cool singers and some uh, fun things that you haven't seen on the site yet coming soon. Let's talk about the musical tip of the week. How about talking about this particular question, because I get asked this question quite often. How much should I practice? And the answer is you should practice as much as you perform, or even more. And The reason why is that they are definitely not the same thing. Performance is the culmination of your practice, the things that you've been working on, conditioning your voice, your ability to sing through your bridges and your breaks and all of the things that we're always talking about. And you need to practice so you can reach those artistic demands, making sure that your voice is nice and healthy and in good condition. Regular vocal practice keeps your voice in total condition so that any temporary diversion from any good technique you're still okay. You're still making it happen. And it's really easy to recognize that you're doing things incorrectly if you're always practicing. You can correct your technique problems very quickly. But if your habit is just to sing all the time, sing at your rehearsals, sing at your performances, and then you're feeling you're coming in, uh, you're either coming into your vocal instructor or you're just noticing after these performances that your voice is trash and you have to rest and you, uh, you can't talk for a day and 
or you go home that night and you're all hoarse when you're trying to talk to people after the performances, those are absolute indications that your technique is off and that you're wrong. If your technique was on, you would not be experiencing that. So that's another good reason to be practicing all the time, if you get my meaning here, because you can identify those problems. And you can also see when your technique is on that you don't have those problems and you feel fine and everything is working the way it should. And that's what's perfect in singing land when your technique and your performances are all lining up together. Now, another heading is, when should I not be practicing? Now, I think it's pretty obvious, but let's talk about it. Whenever your voice is indisposed, meaning you have a head cold or that uh, you're extremely tired, you're fatigued, because it's tired voice, when you're very tired, your voice goes, you can feel it and you can hear it in your voice. So let your body rest and get it stronger again. So any time that there's some kind of a physical problem with your body that interferes with your singing, give in to your body. That's your body telling you a little red flag saying, rest right now, don't sing. So that's when you don't sing. Other than that, you should be practicing all the time to develop the coordination in your voice to not have any problems. So there's your musical tip for the week, and I'm going to wrap this thing up. It's been a very busy week for me uh, between teaching, doing things on the website, getting the uh, vibrato course finished and happy about that, and also rehearsing with lots of old friends for a concert up in the mountains that I'm going to be involved in this weekend, seeing many old friends and great musicians and uh, having a lot of fun myself. Uh, I'm going to be doing a combination of different types of music. Sometimes I'm doing like, I, I don't know if you guys know exactly what I do, but sometimes uh, I've done Sinatra stuff and you know I've done R&B stuff and, and jazz things and uh, this weekend I'm going to be doing some Beatles and I'm going to be doing some R&B, old, old school R&B stuff with a four-piece horn section and uh, it's going to be just too much fun and that's the whole idea of singing, getting out there performing and having fun and interacting with other musicians. So, with that said, I shall look forward to talking about what we'll be doing next week. And uh, with that said, I'll see you at the wrap-up next Friday.